All right. Thank you very much, everyone. And uh, for the sake of making sure that uh, the feedback we provide to this session uh, is uh, transmitted to consultants in the almost entirety. So we they requested that we record this session. And, uh, and I would like to thank everyone for joining in this feedback session. Maybe a little bit of background, as you may know, um, ICPA is conducting a situational analysis of learning management system in Sub-Saharan Africa in effort to see how we can uh, uh, use those learning management system in innov innovative practices uh, in scalable uh, teacher capacity development in the diverse programs, including comprehensive sexuality education, psychosocial support, and other teacher capacity development programs. It is in this context that technology solution maker LTD has been uh, contracted to conduct the assignment. And uh, uh, part of their assignment is also they have to, is, is also uh, defined that they have to present the inception report, which is uh, reviewed and the uh, feedback is provided on it to make sure um, the assignment and the results align what we, we expect to, you know, uh, to do and is relevant to, uh, to ICBA's delivery of expected results. So uh, uh, we, I have, we have sent, the, they have sent the inception report and they, we have distributed the report to different offices. And thank you very much for your feedback you have provided. And uh, probably in this session, uh, we come together to clarify those feedback to technology solution maker LTD's consultants. And we give them opportunity uh, to present uh, what they are planning to do and uh, to provide feedback on that. So this is the agenda we will be following today. Uh, we start with the opening remarks, which, which are already underway. Then technology solution maker will, will give us a brief presentation uh, of the inception report focusing on the methodology and the, the data collection tools. Then we will be there will be feedback uh, session by different offices. We start with the headquarters, and then we go to Dakar office, we go to Harare office, then ICBA, and we will have an open feedback session, and uh, later on the closing remarks. So without further ado, I would like to pass the floor to technology solution maker LTD uh, to make their presentation. But before they do so, I would like to ask everyone, if you are not speaking, please mute your microphone uh, so that we have the maximum quality of voice. So uh, Jean-Claude, uh, the floor is yours if you are ready. Uh, thank you, the chair and the host of this meeting. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well, and I suppose everyone also can you can hear you very well. Great, uh, and I have also shared uh, our presentation. I hope that uh, everyone can see it from uh, their sides. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for. Uh, so this. I can yes. see it, and uh, is there anyone who cannot see it? I suppose everyone can see it. Please proceed. Great, Great. thank you very much. Um, thank you very much. So we're going just to brief uh, uh, this meeting about our uh, inception report. And as you introduced, uh, we are going to be only focusing on the methodological part of it. Uh, so uh, without just uh, delaying, uh, before we go into the methodological part, uh, let me just uh, invite my colleague, Dr. Christine, to just uh, a little bit brief you about the, the scope of this work. Christine, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jean-Claude. Uh, I would like to uh, talk a bit about the scope of the work. Uh, the work uh, is supposed to produce inception report as you have seen the first draft. And uh, it's supposed to do data collection tools and data analysis framework. It's also supposed to collect data from 24 countries, do the analysis, and produce uh, reports. 
and uh, the 24 countries were selected from the all three program countries, the 33 countries which are grouped into uh, acceleration countries, into focus countries, as well as networking countries. You can go to next slide. And the 24 countries are Ghana, Cameroon, Botswana, Burkina Faso, Mali, Malawi, sorry, Eswatini, Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe, DRC, Ethiopia, Ivory Coast, Kenya, Lesotho, Mali, Mozambique, Namibia, Niger, Nigeria, Rwanda, Senegal, South Africa, South Sudan, and Uganda. And the focus is on in service teacher training institutions as well as pre service teacher training institutions. And we are focusing on uh, secondary as well as tertiary education institutions. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty the, the scope. Thank you. Yeah, uh, thank you, Christine, uh, for your uh, brief uh, <coughs> presentation. So, if I continue on methodology, uh, as we <coughs> are going to be uh, conducting this study from the 24 countries, uh, we have adopted a purposive sampling uh, to be able to come up with a number of RMS to analyze from the 24 countries and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, so as part of uh, sampling and uh, uh, the, 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 the focus for this methodology, we assume that uh, we should correct a maximum of four public institutions. That means we, we are aiming at correcting at least data from four RMSs from four different uh, country, uh, institutions in every country. But uh, in our assumption, uh, we, we think that uh, we are aiming at coming up with uh, 96 institutions, which means uh, 96 uh, RMSs. In the case we have, uh, in the case in all countries, we can come up with four RMSs. But uh, uh, we also assume that at least in these uh, 24 countries, there should be at least one RMS that we can identify. But if it is not possible, at least uh, we, we think that uh, we will try our best to make sure that the sample is really representative to come up with the data that we need to, uh, to produce uh, this uh, final report for this uh, station analysis of RMS. So uh, as part of, uh, uh, as far as the people to, to, to contact is, con uh, is concerned, we expect to uh, contact the experts in the area of running management systems. That means uh, uh, different people who work uh, on a daily basis on the RMS. And then we are also uh, aiming at contacting the officers, like directors of, uh, of, of teaching and learning enhancement or directors of e-learning, uh, whatever the name that each institution may be called. And uh, we, we, we are also aiming at having a particular interest on RMS that have been already uh, <coughs> used in uh, supporting uh, comprehensive sexuality education. Because uh, as, uh, as, as uh, we have explored some of the documents from ICBA, we realize that uh, maybe there are some RMSs that have been used uh, for this research in supporting uh, this comprehensive sexuality. So uh, <clears throat> the sampling of these institutions, of course, will be based on stress, stratifying variables by considering uh, public institutions that provide in-service and pre-service teacher education and training, as my colleague also uh, has come to mention. And also we are going to be focusing <coughs> on uh, institutions that really use RMS uh, whatever the category of RMS, but at least the RMS should be providing online branded or hybrid or distance running programs or training of pre-service and in-service teachers. So, and uh, we are also focusing, uh, we we'll also try to stratify uh, uh, the institutions in terms of uh, their size, that means a small, medium, or rich in terms of their populations, that means uh, students and uh, uh, faculty staff. And also we're going to be looking for institutions uh, and categorize them in terms of uh, uh, mixed uh, or 
uh, mixed with male or female in terms of their population. So also, uh, we will also try to see from the RMS perspective, uh, we're going to see how those uh, institutions have considered the special needs uh, from students and the teachers as far as teaching and learning online is concerned. So uh, <clears throat> then uh, for data correction uh, and analysis, we have uh, planned to use a desk review whereby we have already started exploring some of the documents, like a document from Ikiba, the institutional reports and the policies and other scientific resources. And for quantitative uh, data correction, uh, we're going to be using uh, an online survey questionnaire and the link will be created, of course, after this session of the feedback to make sure that the survey can correct the data that we are looking for to answer the research questions for this uh, situation analysis of RMS. Then uh, for qualitative data corrections, we are going to use a follow-up online interview uh, whereby we are going to use some video conference tools to make sure that we can correct online uh, uh, qualitative data from the key uh, people that we think can provide the useful data for this situation analysis. Then for data analysis, of course, for quantitative data, we are planning to use statistical packages such as SPSS or Excel to produce some statistical data. But for quantitative data, we are going to use the MaxQDA software which will help us to analyze some themes that may be emerging from the interviews or some documents that we may collect from the sample institutions. So uh, I would like to invite my colleague, uh, Dr. Matthias, to come up with the tools that we are planning to use. Dr. Matthias, can you hear me? Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, as uh, my colleague uh, Byungur has said, in this methodology we are also, uh, we have developed some tools uh, to collect the data. We have the questionnaire, and uh, the questionnaire, as you have seen, it is uh, written in English and in, in French. We have two versions. And in that questionnaire, we are now trying to collect information about the every institution. We are going now to check about the infrastructure and uh, of course as we are talking about LMS we need to know that, uh, the LMS is hosted uh, in the I can say in the campus or in the university or it is a uh, cloud host hosted we are also going to check how now the LMS is implemented in that institution and of course when we are having such uh, uh, to such a uh, documents, sorry, such tool or uh, such infrastructure. Always we have barriers and challenges. We are going to see in every institution that we are going to work with what are now the training which are organized and the, who are facilitating. Uh, here we mean uh, lecturers or uh, students or any other person who is helping in the implementation of the LMS and we are going to see the barriers and challenges that this institution is meeting uh, during the implementation of or the use of the LMS and of course we need to know what are now the, the positive impact that uh, have been uh, met during the use of uh, this LMS and we'll see the different outcomes in that institution and later we can ask them uh, to recommend what they would like uh, to get. Uh, we are also planning to get uh, the interview, to use the interview protocol. We have designed it. It is also in two versions, French and English. And this also is going to complement the questionnaire that we have. If we find that in the questionnaire, a respondent has given an information that we don't understand, which is not clear for us. We mean uh, we are we are going not to uh, use this uh, interview uh, protocol. And of course, later we will try to see because some inter respondent can tell us information which are now on their uh, learning uh, Elan platform. So we need to, to check ourselves to see that some uh, information which are uh displayed on the main page of their learning management system and here we mean the business intelligence analytics it means we are going to have to check the dashboard and of course 
the information that we can get in one uh, institution may differ from information that we get in another uh, institution because the difference will be in terms of uh, plugins that the administrator uh, has uh, installed. Next. <clears throat> Yeah, after now collecting the information by using the uh, above uh, tools, we have designed an analysis framework, and this is going to help us to do an analysis. We are now collecting in this analysis uh, framework the different information, as I said, which are now grouped in terms of the different topics that we met in the questionnaire. Here I mean the respondent information, institution background, the infrastructure, the LMS, which is in that institution, the training facilitation and support that they are getting, the barriers and challenges, outcomes and impact, and of course, the overall implementation here, we mean also the recommendations. This is going to be done, it has been done, sorry, in Microsoft Excel. Uh, we have designed a sheet that we, will help us to collect all those information that the different respondents are going to, have to provide to us. And after now, we can see, uh, we can do the deep analysis by using the different information that we have put together. This is what we have planned to, to do. And I thank you very much. Yeah, thank you, uh, Matthias, for your brief uh, introduction about the tools and the, the, the analysis framework. So uh, we are, uh, as a team, as a consulting team, uh, I think this uh, inception uh, meeting is very, very important to, to, to us to, to improve more on the way forward. So I think I can give the floor over to the chair and we are really looking forward to get your constructive feedback. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Jean-Claude, for that uh, presentation of the inception report. So, and uh, without delaying, I would like to pass the floor to, uh, to the headquarters uh, for feedback. Uh, Sally, can you hear me? Yes, thank you, Bernard, and thank you, uh, Jean-Claude, Christina, and Matthias for that presentation uh, and for the, the, draft, um, the draft document, which I read this morning. Um, and look, I've I've provided some feedback within that document that's that's gone to Bernard, so I'm sure that you'll see that at some point. But just to very briefly summarise, um, overall, we're really excited that that this work is taking place. Um, what I did say in the introduction of the report that you provided was that it would be useful for readers like myself who are not super familiar with the mechanisms of LMS systems to just give a little bit more background of what they are and, and you know what they set out to do and how they contribute to the overall uh, landscape of teacher training mechanisms. Um, I think that it's useful to have a really clear link between the LMS pathway that, that we, we're going to take and that, that's important and useful for scaling up teacher training and other efforts to build the capacity of teachers in the region. And I, I think that probably UNESCO colleagues could help add some of that text. What I'm really keen to do is, uh, and I'm, I'm interested to hear about other from other colleagues within, within the region about this, but I'm keen to not fall into a trap where we're presenting a report that positions LMS as the only way to reach teachers through training. I think we need to be very careful that we're also advocating for other forms of teacher capacity development. Um, and we know that, you know, there's there's evidence um, informing different forms of teacher training and some is, you know, um, stronger th than others. So that's the first thing. I also um, wanted to echo other colleagues' comments in the document that it's really important to think about how we're assessing the quality of the LMS mechanisms um, when it comes to delivering teacher education. So it's one thing to look at whether the LMS systems are existing, but how are we assessing the quality? And I, I, I don't know a lot about LMS systems myself, as you can probably tell, um, but I didn't get a sense through the report about how quality will really be assessed and considered um, through the data collection process. Um, and then finally, I had a couple of just minor questions, um, which you've somewhat addressed this, this afternoon already about how you will identify the institutions. I know that you've been a fairly ambitious with your target of 96, but I'm wondering 
where, where you'll work out, you know, where how you'll actually scope out where the institutes with LMSs are and, and how you'll identify those and whether that will be through, for example, reaching out to UNESCO focal points or perhaps ministry focal points in different countries. And finally, who exactly will we be targeting to answer the survey? Because in my opinion, it would look like it would be useful to ask two kinds of people actually. On one hand, the more IT service provider people who can provide information about the IT side of things and the, um, I guess, the, the IT infrastructure. But on the other hand, somebody with more of a uh, background in teacher capacity building who can talk more about the quality in terms of how um, the LMS is able to effectively build the capacity of, of teachers, uh, how the LMS, how the, how the teacher training intervention, I suppose, is potentially able to be designed within the context of that uh, infrastructure. So I, 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 again, I, my questions are echoed in the comments that I provided throughout the report, um, but yeah, just interested to hear some feedback on those elements. Thanks, Bernard, back to you. Uh, thank you very much, Sally. And uh, yeah, I would like to confirm that, yes, we received the comments and uh, those comments actually on the draft are also very important and I will send all the documents with comments to the consultants so that they can refer to them and they see also how they can, um, you know, they can incorporate some of the feedback. And in some of the documents, there's also suggested uh, editing, uh, which uh, will even help improve the, the, the report and make it more focused uh, to uh, kind of clarify uh, what LMSs are and the, the potential role of LMS in the teacher capacity de development and how they work with uh, other you know, innovative practices or initiatives or other tools, even for, uh, you know, uh, for uh, accelerating teacher capacity development. So as Sally, you, you highlighted, LMS itself is not a solution and cannot work alone as a solution because in, in many cases there are many institutions that are, may have LMS for years but when you look at the, how those LMS have been used you don't see any impact so it's it, it's very important that you highlighted that that point we don't stop at LMS we see also uh, other initiatives and how how LMS ca can come to add value to teacher capacity development uh, not rather than taking them as a, an end in themselves Thank you very much. And uh, uh, maybe we uh, we can pass to the Dakar office for uh, feedback. So uh, Xavier, I don't know if I pass to you or anyone else who have uh, feedback from the Dakar office, uh, over to you. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Uh, I identify very much with uh, the comments made by, uh, by Sally and uh, what I'm going to say, I hope will go in the same direction and uh, and hopefully uh, complete what she has already said. <clears throat> uh, I think uh, it is important to understand from the start that uh, teacher training in an area such as CSing has already challenges beyond the type of uh, delivery system. Uh, in, be it interactive face-to-face -face or through um, learning management systems. And uh, it is very important to understand those challenges uh, in the first place and what should constitute a, a quality teacher training program in order to properly assess um, any training program and in particular to assess uh, a program delivered through learning management management systems. So I would recommend that um, the, the the inception report goes deeper into into that. What constitutes quality teacher training program in this area to ensure that it is interactive, student centered, using active learning, teaching and learning approaches or training and learning approaches in this case. Also, uh, it would be very interesting to understand from the start uh, the possibilities given by different e-learning platforms to meet 
the requirement of a um, teacher training program, quality teacher training program, so that teacher training institutions and um, specific concrete uh, learning management systems are assessed against the possibilities that those programs give in theory and the, the requirements of a um, quality teacher training program. Um, then going to the um, to the method uh, itself, uh, I think I would recommend the, um, that before going to um, before the, the 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 application of the survey, um, I would probably recommend that a few qualitative interviews are led. Um, to have a first understanding of uh, the reality of the learning management systems as they are applied to the training of teachers in this area in different countries, the types of challenges, and, um, the constraints, the possibilities, uh, and that the questionnaire is refined based on the slightly deeper knowledge of the reality. Uh, without um, those preliminary interviews, there is always the possibility that uh, an important question has been left out of the questionnaire. And uh, once the data is collected, it's always difficult to come back to those important questions. Of course, there are follow-up interviews, but it's not always possible to, um, to, to, to complete missing data with uh, follow-up interviews. Um, I was also thinking that uh, it would be important to have the point of view of beneficiaries from those programs, trainees, and unless I missed them, I, it seemed that they are not included in the, in the sample. Um, but the experience from the point of view of trainees might be different from the one of facilitators or IT staff and it would be really, really good to have their point of view to have a complete picture. Um, the, the, the sample is not, uh, so the sample information given is that um, at least four institution or four institutions will be uh, part of the sample per country, but unless I missed it, we do not have information from on the number of interviewees per category in each country. So that would be it would be good to have that kind of information. I hope I didn't miss it. Um, I didn't find. Uh, unless I missed them also, different questions to assess uh, the reality of pre-service and in-service teacher training programs. Um, and uh, uh, um, the, the use of um, learning management systems might be different in those two settings and it would be, it might be useful to go a little bit deeper into those uh, differences through specific questions. Um, as regards the, the data analysis, um, um, so we have the information that some tools will be used, but the data analysis strategy is not very uh, detailed and very, very clear. Uh, in this case, the unit of analysis uh, would be uh, the teacher training institution or maybe teacher training program using a specific learning management system, but data is collected at the level of individuals. So what is not uh, very clear is how the, the information coming from individuals from different categories will be aggregated to uh, qualify the unit of analysis, which is the um, a teacher training institution or the teacher training program. And then I have a few questions regarding the, the, um, the questionnaires themselves. Um, 
let me have a look uh, go let, in order to yes I, I felt that some questions uh, uh, would have to be um, expanded, uh, particularly the questions regarding the, the challenges. Uh, we know that there are different uh, challenges of very different levels. Um, trainees might be might not be sufficiently confident in using um, uh, the the technology. Uh, the technology might not be available at um, uh, in the, where the, the trainees uh, need them. Um, the, well, the, the design of the course uh, itself uh, may not be uh, may not be the best, or may be very useful and recommendable to other countries. There are so many questions that can be asked, and it would be good to have a more detailed detailed overview of the different types of aspects that uh, that could be searched through the, the the questionnaire. Also, the experience from the end users. Um, could be broken down and more details on how this will be addressed could be useful. Um, well, I'll probably, and yes, and of course, the, the, the question of the impact. Um, Describe the, the, the question re, uh, regarding the use of uh, the learning management systems in terms of their impact on equity inclusion and particularly regarding access to quality education. This is really what we want to, to know in the end. So this would, um, I think, I feel it would be very useful to have a more detailed set of questions in order to extract uh, information that could be more easily analyzed and, um, and interpreted in the end. Right, so I, I think basically, oh yes, and a, a final comment is I was wondering if it would not be useful to focus the um, follow-up interviews on a limited number of teacher training institutions or programs among those that are more characteristics, either in terms of success or in terms of challenges or in terms of lesson learns, lessons learned. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure about the, the, the follow-up interviews uh, strategy. Um, did uh, the, the researchers intend to um, do them in each and every country, or did they intend to, to, to use them to further explore systems that may be more promising in terms of uh, lessons learned? So that would be my final question. Thank you very much. I don't know if my colleagues in Dhaka would have uh, any other questions. All right, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Xavier. And, and also, maybe it's, it's good to give the floor to Jose, who took that time to uh, read through the report and even comments. And, uh, and also, he has some experience in learning management system. And uh, Jose, maybe you can quickly give some feedback. Uh, Jose, can you hear me? Yes, but yes, 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 Bernard. I can hear you very well. Hello? Yeah, I can hear you very well. Please uh, go okay. ahead. Thank so you. You, you can you, you can give your like in, if, in a few minutes, like uh, maximum of three to four minutes. Okay, it's, it's even enough because uh, before me, uh, Xavier and Sally, they have been very comprehensive. I appreciate their comments were very, you know, very comprehensive, as I said. So I will just come in with some uh, slight comments, maybe uh, come back on some of the comments they made, just to maybe add some few things. Yes, I would like to to start by the by the sampling. Yes, to say that in the um, in the documents, it, it was not very clear that the that IT IT personnel would be really very considered because as as, as you see in the survey questionnaire. There are a lot and a lot of questions that are related to the technical aspects of learning management systems. So uh, I really uh, suggest that IT personnel who are in charge of, um, let's say, installing and management of those platforms are considered during the uh, during the, the the process of uh, interview or uh, and also uh, survey questionnaires. 
The, the second thing also uh, that I would like maybe to to talk about uh, is about the uh, also the, the, the questionnaires also. You, you know that uh, more often in many uh, let's say institutions, the learning management systems are not really integrated in the pedagogical process. I mean, for example, you, you can realize that they have some modules online, but during the assessment process, the courses that are online are not really integrated in the graduation process. So I think we should, uh, I have added some two questions in the questionnaire to ensure that, or to know that, to know if they can really consider the assessment that are made online in their graduation process. This is some, some, something also important to know the importance that themselves give to that uh, online system. The, the second thing also is to know if uh, they have a kind of a kind of a mechanism or yes, a kind of mechanism to or, or tools to prevent cheating during online assessment for of, of students. So those are some aspects also that, that we, we should m make sure that we consider in order to have the, the value or the importance of these uh, online modalities. Yes, yeah, so those are maybe some, some some two few things I would like I would like to to come back to come back on it. I also I would like to also Add or to end by to end the one aspect that I've also highlighted that it is not very really clear in this um, methodology in this methodology how how we are considering the initial and how we are, we are considering pre and in service training and I think those, those two trainings are not really uh, managed the same way in many countries so I think I, I think that we should also ensure that in the methodology in the way we are proceeding we are taking into account how those two Two different levels of trainings are considered. I mean, pre-service and in-service. How, how the learning management systems are designed to take into account those two levels of, of training. I think I can stop here. I hope I have not gone through, through the time you allotted to me. Thank you, uh, Benang, and back to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jose. And uh, um. Yeah, I think those are a very important point, and uh, you highlighted uh, also making clear how uh, teacher in the service teacher training institutions and the pre-service teacher training institutions may be included in the in the in this study. And also, uh, I will come back to that later when when I come I provide feedback from me. But what I noted is the uh, there's a need to be really to clearly indicate that focus on those two types of institutions. And, and also remaining on that area because that's where uh, the interest is in this in this study. So uh, without delaying uh, a lot, I think we we can pass to uh, Harare office. Uh, is there anyone at Harare office with you willing to give feedback? Bernard, I'm not sure if you saw that Remy has put some comments in the chat function because he had to go. I'm not sure if there's other colleagues on the call, though. Perhaps there All are. Right. Yeah. Uh, is there anyone in the Harari office? Or if, if there's no one, then we can we can we, we will pass the comments. Let me put it there. Uh, so I think there's no one. Uh, All right, so if there's no one in the Harari office uh, who can provide further feedback, maybe we will pass quickly to Iqbal feedback. And uh, so if, if I would start, I would say overall, you know, even the methodology, I wouldn't say it's, it's, it's kind of uh, very fine, but at least to give some direction on where uh, you intend to go in terms of uh, collecting data. And uh, uh, there are some possibilities that if you tweak it and uh, improve it in the light of the feedback, uh, we hope to collect the data that are relevant for uh, this study. And it is also very good uh, that you have a sort of uh, follow-up interview. And uh, probably what, what I would see is uh, you have already started uh, developing interview questions, the follow-up interview questions. And I'm wondering if, uh, Normally, the, the way you would do it, you would start analyzing the data you have received on the survey, and then that would give you uh, some clue on which other information you may need to be able to have comprehensive data. So 
you may think about that uh, and see if you probably can revise the interview questions, the follow-up interview questions after you have collected the data. And that may guide you on uh, which formation is missing and it is, is crucial for having a, a comprehensive report on that. And of course, without forgetting also the suggestion Xavier made uh, that the pre-survey uh, interview can also is also another possibility. So I, I would say that I, at, at the current stage, uh, probably uh, you may you may want to start with the pre-survey interview, then after you do the survey questionnaire. And also after the survey questionnaire, then you, in the light of the results from the survey questionnaire, you do the, the follow-up interview. But also you highlighted something. You highlighted that the, the, the survey will be online. And I think it's very important to have it tested uh, before it is rolled out. So if you think you would plan to do to develop the online survey, it would be make sense to pilot it to uh, a few people who may have the same characteristics as, as target uh, group or the target participants to see if, if everything works as intended. Because sometimes you may think that the survey is well developed and there may be some uh, when it, some button which, which are not functioning or when you submit, that it doesn't submit. So think about that. Uh, and if please, if you plan to, to make it online, before sending it to participants, let uh, have some people go through it and test it and make sure everything works uh, very well. And um, I'll probably allow me to move to the general feedback. And I think it takes uh, a long time for everyone, colleagues, to read through this uh, the inception report. And part of it is the uh, probably uh, the kind of draft that was submitted. Normally. In these assignments, we, we expect a consultant to submit a, a draft that is of high quality, like a draft you would submit to international journals for publication. And the principle is writing to make the job of the reader as easiest as possible. And that requires uh, sometimes proofreading the, the work and editing as much as, as you can. And uh, uh, and that make it easier even for someone who is giving feedback uh, so that the feedback focus on a, a critical area rather than focusing on a, a kind of structures that need to be done or some language issues that need to be addressed. And, and I, I want also to come back to some of the, uh, the aspects in, in your writing that may, can make it easy. Uh, and those that can be cohesion. Uh, if you understand well, uh, my colleagues have been having difficulties to, to link together some aspects of this assignment. And part of this is uh, because cohesion in, in your writing was not really, uh, how would I say, it was not really focused on. And uh, we had an earlier discussion with Jacques Claude. We thought maybe you would send this, this uh, draft because it is at this early stage, but it is always to send the, the, the most refined draft at any stage and uh, make sure even the sentences and the paragraph uh, structures are fluid all along. And, and that helped the reader to see how different parts of the assignment or the documents uh, link together. And still on, co on, on consistency, uh, please make sure when you are numbering, uh, you, you know, uh, there's consistency. You, for example, you cannot have section 3.2 without section 3.1. And the, it's the same for writing styles, the same for the language you use, whether it is British, English, or American use English, use it, you choose one, one language, one style, and use it consistently all along. And, and again, we're coming back to the focus of the assignment, it's very important to be really very focused on the, on the scope of the assignment. And personally, when I has been reading, whether in the methodology or in the area sections, even the, in the tools, uh, it's, it's, it's not clear which institution will be included because the focus here is in service teacher training institutions and pre-service teacher training institutions. So, the interest is in the learning management system that are available in those two types of institutions. 
uh, there, there are some area where I have been reading, then I see uh, you are going also to universities or other high education institutions. The only reason to include such an institution is because they have a teacher training program, pre either pre-service or in service teacher training program. That's the only justification. And in the report, it's probably not a good idea to focus on the university. It's, it's rather a good idea to focus on teacher training institutions. And then maybe you may mention that it is hosted in this university, but really we want to see more emphasis on that aspects of teacher training institution being in the service teacher training institutions or pre-service teacher training institutions. That's what we want to see in the, in the report. And uh, in, in, in some of the questions, when you are asking uh, participants to respond, uh, for example, you provided them with some options, but there are some options which don't have the same meaning to participants. Uh, a good example I can give is the question that say, uh, how, how fast is teacher support provided in LMS? So the, the, the option provided is very fast, fast, and so on. Um, very fast is very subjective. For one participant, one week can be very fast. For another participant, one week can be very slow. So you may probably want to change that and use, for example, 24 hours, uh, 28, uh, 48 hours, such measurable uh, kind of uh, units that can be uh, understood by everyone uh, who is participating. So, Again, there are many uh, comments in the documents I received, and uh, I also suggested different areas uh, that need to be edited. So all those documents will be sent to uh, to, to consultants uh, so that you can uh, work on them uh, before you go to data collection. So uh, briefly, those are the comments I have. Um, so, um, if you have any question, if you need any clarification before we, we open the session to uh, anyone for comments, please uh, let me know. Jean Claude. Uh, yes, uh, thank you very much for for your really, really constructive comments. I really like all the comments from all the offices that are provided, and uh, uh, on behalf of the team, uh, we are going to really integrate these comments into our our tools and the reporting, of course. And um, yeah, I just have just one small question uh, on uh, the suggestion that we should maybe start with uh, uh, baseline kind of interviews so that we can uh, incorporate those uh, information from the next like, survey question, uh, questions. So uh, we didn't have really uh, a plan on conducting this pre interviews because it actually it's even challenging because we don't even have now the contact for for, for the institution that we are going to be uh, contacting so i don't know if from from Ikiba side maybe you can highlight this how can we really embark on these pre-interviews while we don't even have the full list of the institution to interact with so that's my question so i uh, maybe the team may have some other questions as well. So uh, over to you. Thank you. But yeah, again, that, that was a suggestion. And, and when you receive such suggestion, you see how practical it is. And the, uh, the other thing is also the, the first step, I think, is to, uh, I can see Christine has raised her hand. Uh, yeah, but uh, what I wanted to suggest on this Christine, I come back to you after, after these comments. Is the first step is to identify institutions that may have learning management system because uh, that's the initial step. And uh, I, I think we, we have also been uh, asking if, if the national program officers, if, if they have any, they have they know any of those institutions to reach out to consultants to, to, to let you know. And I think also that can be part of the methodology. You can, you can highlight, uh, that support uh, the, the NPO have provided is part of the methodology, how things went really, how you'll be doing collecting data, all the process, that's what you need to describe in the methodology. So uh, after you identify those institutions, 
maybe uh, if you know the contact people as well, you can conduct the interview with. Uh, you can you can approach them with that interview, or maybe an, an alternative would be to conduct that survey and then you you make sure there's follow up interview. But uh, the whole purpose to make sure you have comprehensive data. And, and I think that's why Xavier provided that suggestion, to make sure your data are complete. Uh, so it's up to you to fig figure out how uh, the approach you take. But whatever approach you take, you have to justify that the data have been uh, comprehensive. Thank you. Bernard. So, Christine. Thank you, Bernard, and thank you, the team, for very constructive feedback. Uh, I just have one. First of all, I see that Xavier has proposed to make a pre-survey of 10, about to 10 uh, surveys, and uh, I think we shall cooperate to see how to achieve this. Uh, my question is um, about a comment from uh, Sally. Uh, she pointed out a very important point about any other tools that is used to train teachers. This could be maybe SMS-based, could be feature phone-based call and so on, as I can imagine. And I just want to understand if, uh, apart from LMS, uh, online platform LMS, if we have to look for also those other tools. Thank you. Bernard, would you like me to quickly respond to that? Yes, please, please go ahead. Sure. Um, thanks, thanks, Christine. That's a good question. Um, the the answer, really, from my perspective, is is no. We we wouldn't expect that. Although Bernard, please um come in and 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 add your opinion. I guess what I would like to see, given this report, may be read by a lot of different people who aren't possibly aren't um fully aware of the different forms of teacher capacity building that exist. I'd just like to see some acknowledgement in the in the report that you know, while we're looking at the potential for LMSs to, to reach um, and scale up teacher training, we would argue that there are lots of other ways that we should be investing in teacher training as well. And it, it could just be a couple of sentences, but I just really think it's important to acknowledge that so that we don't um, lead people to think that this is the only way that we would be training teachers in the future. Thank you, that's clear. All right, so uh, does anyone uh, have any maybe final comments before we open the floor to uh, kind of for open feedback? Okay, so now we, so we can open the floor to everyone. If there's any other question, any other comments, or constructive feedback to give consultants, please, uh, the floor is open. Um, so if anyone want to grab the mic, please uh, raise your hands, then we uh, we can pass uh, we can uh, pass the floor to you and you give comments. So the floor is open to any participants who may have more comments, but also to consultants. If you have further questions to better understand the feedback, please uh, feel also free to ask questions. I can see uh, Martin, Matthias, see Matthias. Yes, yes Matthias. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, as my colleague said, I would like to thank also the uh, the persons who have read this uh, uh, tools that we have designed and who made some comments which are very important. Uh, I want to come back to the, uh, the observation made by Xavier from Senegal. Yeah, he has said that in this questionnaire, he would like to see uh, uh, some questions uh, that we are directing to the trainees. 
or the end users or the beneficiaries. Yeah, I find it very uh, interesting, but practically I'm wondering how uh, maybe we are going to, to, to design another uh, questionnaire for to check the satisfaction of the end users. Otherwise, what we had uh, from the terms of reference, it was to check uh, how now the LMSs are uh, working, how they can fit for the purpose, uh, which is to make sure that those LMSs can host the modules or the courses that we intend for that OOO uh, program. Yeah, thank you very much. Hello. Hello. Hello, but yes. Hello. Did, I can hear you. you. Hear yes, yes, we we could hear you. So I was saying, th I think that Xavier's suggestion is also uh, somehow very good because uh, at some point you can have one perspective, uh, data from one perspective from the manager of the learning management system. But if you have like one user, for example, give their uh, point of view their experience, how it works, uh, that can provide also a general kind of comprehensive idea on, on, on how, uh, how uh, you know, that learning management system work, not only from the perspective of the manager who enrolls students, but also from the perspective of the learners or the, the teacher, even who try to develop courses using the LMS if, um, uh, if they use it. So yeah, you may think about it. You don't have to have many people, so many people participating in, in that area, but maybe having for each learning management system, having uh, a, you know, a point of view of the, the, the user who use that learning management system and the challenges, if there's any challenges they experience, if there's a, uh, what they like, for example, about that learning management system, that can give idea on how the that learning management system work uh, overall. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yes, then, uh, any, yeah, is it, is it uh, William? Yes, uh, I, I want to, to je, je peux le dire en français? Oui, oui, allez-y, en français. Je euh, j'adhère à, à l'importance de d'avoir le point de vue des bénéficiaires de la formation euh, dans le cadre de l'évaluation justement des plateformes de formation. Il est important d'avoir ce point de vue pour euh, euh, évaluer la, la, la qualité ou la la qualité de, de la formation, comment ceux qui sont passés par là euh, jugent ces approches de, 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 de formation. Euh, je pense qu'il a été relevé par plusieurs, par tous ceux qui ont fait des commentaires détaillés, que l'aspect qualitatif de la formation à travers cette plateforme n'apparaissait pas beaucoup et qu'il euh, qu fallait euh, des, des questions liées, liées également à cet aspect. Et évaluer cette qualité euh, nécessite, euh, je pense, logiquement, avoir également le point de vue de ceux qui en ont bénéficié, ceux qui sont passés par là. L'infrastructure peut peut-être parfaite, mais peut-être des approches ou alors le retour, le ressenti, la, la, la vie, de ceux qui sont passés par là et qui ont bénéficié de ces formations est extrêmement, extrêmement important. Euh, je pense également que pour les questionnaires tels qu'ils apparaissent, euh, il y a des soucis de, de, de traduction également et que l'équipe des consultants devrait euh, y jeter un coup d'œil pour s'assurer de la qualité de la, euh, de la traduction euh, des, euh, du questionnaire. Les versions françaises présentent un certain nombre d'éléments qu'il faudrait, qu faudrait corriger, à, à, à mon avis. Et peut-être dans le questionnaire, aller souvent, et c'est peut-être toute l'importance d'avoir eu quelques échanges préalables 
quelques petites enquêtes préalables qui permettraient d'avoir peut-être plus de détails dans la formulation de questions et souvent euh, de, de, de suggérer quelques réponses euh, pour que, pour des questions particulières, ceux qui vont être amenés à, les, à, à répondre euh, aient une variation, euh, divers points de vue qui leur sont proposés. Euh, les questions totalement ouvertes peut-être n'amèneraient euh, pas ceux qui vont remplir le, 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 le questionnaire à donner entièrement leur, leur avis. Donc, euh, s'il y a une, euh, des enquêtes préalables, cela permettrait peut-être d'affiner les questions et de suggérer euh, quelques possibilités de réponse. Euh, et je pense que cela aura un effet positif dans l'analyse du retour de, de ceux qui auront répondu. Je pense également qu'il est important, ça a été dit aussi déjà, euh, que le questionnaire envoyé, euh, du moins le, le questionnaire et les interviews, que, ne, que les deux types de, ne, ne, ne soient pas répétitifs. Parce qu'on a l'impression pour le moment que le questionnaire partagé et les interviews sont comme similaires. Euh, il, euh, il faudrait, je pense, une, que l'aspect qualitatif euh, ne soit pas forcément une copie de, de tout le, le questionnaire, de, de tout l'aspect quantitatif à travers le questionnaire. Voilà, merci. Merci beaucoup, William, euh, pour ce, ce, cette contribution, euh, je pense, qui est très pertinente. Euh, So, uh, permettez-moi de passer à l'anglais pour uh, clarifier. So, maybe for the consultants, what you can do is after, uh, after collecting data, the survey data, that's when you can develop the uh, survey questionnaire. But sorry, the interview protocol. Uh, after noting which data, which, uh, which data, additional data you may need really to have a thorough picture, of what does the learning management system uh, uh, can enable. And that can also apply to, uh, to including the, those beneficiaries, the perspective of those beneficiaries. So after analyzing data, you, might, you may select the, the, the learning management systems you see as being promising. Then you uh, focus on those learning management system to see if you can collect some data from the end users. Uh, so that you, you learn from their experience as well. So if they use those learning management system, how do they feel uh, the quality, of, uh, how, 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 what is their experience? How quality learning happen with them? Because, because sometimes if you focus only on an administrator, they, they may be there, uh, but from experience, when the learners want to use the learning management system, uh, for example, it's down, they don't access it, or some of them access it, uh, but they, not all of them. So it's very important to also have that perspective to understand what is the experience of the, those learners who use the learning management system. So probably the most promising one, uh, you may want to recommend that uh, maybe ICPA focus on uh, when, when it comes to developing collaboration with the different institutions. So, Um, maybe you can tell me what you think, uh, consultants. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Thank you. Uh, actually, I think it's a, it's a very good idea to, 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 to come up with an interview protocol which serves as a follow-up to the preliminary so-called quantitative data that you may ha have collected from the, the survey questionnaires. So, so Uh, I also uh, personally buy this idea that we we can just draft you know an interview protocol based on um, the preliminary data that we have collected. So so this is a very good idea, and we are going to consider it for for for, for our next activities. Thank you. Maybe anyone from the team can come up with some other reflections. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the comments. Yeah that we have received so far. I agree with the comment as well, Jean-Claude, thank you.
So maybe the, the other thing I can add, uh, Jean-Claude, is also in the interview protocol, or maybe the survey, you, in the survey, that's where the question would be, please try also to invest, investigate how enrollment is done in those uh, learning management system. Because is, for example, is enrollment done by the administrator or uh, is self-enrollment uh, enabled so that the, the learner who want, if, if, for example, we develop teacher capacity development programs or courses, uh, those teachers can come and be self-enroll in the programs. Uh, because sometimes when there's administrators who, uh, who, uh, who is enrolling students, or learners, uh, there's a limited capacity on how many people they can enroll. But if it's self-enrollment, uh, the reach can be even much higher. So, and, uh, and that's where the, the scalability can be uh, can come in. So do, do, do you get the point I'm making? Yeah, I got it, yeah. But, but the issue of enrollment, of course, uh, <clears throat> to RMS, um, comes also with the issues of security, uh, and it depends on some institutional uh, perspective as far as the access to the system is concerned. So, and as part of the data uh, uh, correction, we have uh, mentioned that we are going to also to be uh, checking the current policies related to the e-learning uh, uh, and e-learning infrastructure as well from those institutions. So, I think we can get to know these issues of enrollment without asking them from the survey questionnaire, the, the interview protocol. We can use even those policies and come up with the the, the information that can maybe is is that. Yeah. yeah, but if you don't see if you don't see any information, you can ask the manager how, how is enrollment done. So do you do they have to come to your office or do you have to enroll the the learners or the trainees or can you, do you, it does is is self enrollment. Uh, in the courses hosted by L your LMS uh, possible, something like that. Because there are many institutions anywhere and many learning management systems that let people kind of self enroll. And that makes it easier even for the, the, the administrator. They don't have to enroll anyone, especially when they, uh, there's a large number of learners who need to be in, in the learning management system. As opposed, for example, if you say, it's the, the, the administrator who's going to enroll uh, them, there may be delay, especially if the, the, the number of uh, learners who want to be enrolled in the courses or programs uh, become large. Yeah, true. Yeah, I agree. Mm. <clears throat> so any other question or comment? So again, let, let me really highlight the, the, the importance of, uh, you know, um, so we have some national program officers. Uh, we have been writing to you, asking you if you could support a, a consultant identify institutions in your teacher training institutions and the teacher, train, teacher education institutions in your respective countries that may you may know may have the learning management systems. If you know such institution, it may be very helpful if you really uh, guide the consultants so that they uh, they know where to go and who to approach, and uh, we still uh, we we are still really asking you to provide that kind of support to consultants. And also the other thing I would like to remind you: uh, we don't want to see uh, education authorities in your respective countries uh, surprised that this uh, this situation analysis is, is taking place. Uh, please, if you haven't, uh, send the letter to them to notify them that uh, uh, this situation analysis is uh, underway. And uh, yeah, any any other comments? That was a reminder to participants to participants NPOs. William, do you want to say something? Non, mais peut-être aussi l'équipe des consultants, partout où ils se trouvent, euh, peuvent descendre vers des institutions de, qui utilisent des plateformes de formation sur place. Euh, en termes de, 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 
échanger avec des équipes qui sont sur place, euh, voir euh, une espèce de première observation. Euh, ça permettrait certainement également, ça participerait à l'amélioration du questionnaire, échanger avec peut-être des personnes qui sont dans ce processus. Euh, en plus de tout ce que les, les, les administrateurs nationaux de programme pourraient, pourraient indiquer. Il est bien peut-être également que chacun, là où il se trouve, s'imprègne et descende. Je pense que s'ils mènent une étude dans le domaine, c'est qu'ils ont... Euh, voilà, ils s'y connaissent euh, assez aussi euh, suffisamment. Ils ont des contacts dans le, dans le domaine. Euh, cela permettrait de voilà d'affiner le questionnaire, les approches, de suggérer quelques euh, pistes de réponse pour certaines questions, euh, pour qu'elles ne restent pas totalement ouvertes. Voilà. Merci. Merci beaucoup William pour cette suggestion. Si quelqu'un d'autre a une suggestion ou une, réponse, une, une question. Oui. Euh... oui. Tenez Côte d'Ivoire. Oui, tenez à vous la oui. parole. Merci beaucoup. Je voudrais à la suite vraiment vous remercier pour les présentations que vous avez faites. Et à la suite de William, dire que dans le cadre de cette enquête que vous voulez réaliser, si je prends le cas de la Côte d'Ivoire, nous avons déjà des projets qui ne sont pas peut-être au trois, mais qui utilisent les plateformes et qui travaillent avec celles-ci au niveau de l'UNESCO. J'en veux pour preuve. Cafit, Imagine École. Et donc, nos collègues déjà qui sont sur ces projets-là sont en lien avec les plateformes existantes. Alors, lorsque nous-mêmes, nous avons voulu que le courrier soit signé par la représentante, elle s'est demandé pourquoi nous, on venait faire signer ce courrier. Donc, on lui a montré un peu, on lui a partagé tout ce que vous avez envoyé. Ce qui veut dire que si les consultants tels que je, je, nous avons envoyé le courrier peuvent rentrer aussi en contact avec ces personnes de l'UNESCO qui sont sur des projets en lien avec les plateformes, je pense que ça peut leur donner aussi une idée et euh, dans le cadre de la réalisation de euh, l'enquête que vous êtes en train de faire afin de faciliter la formation des enseignants. Parce qu'avec leur expérience, ils pourront nous donner aussi quelques informations. Bien sûr, en plus des points focaux que qu vont, que les consultants vont consulter pour avoir suffisamment d'informations. À vous. Merci beaucoup, Tennessee. Je pense que c'était cette information très pertinente et je pense que le projet KFIT, KFIT uh, 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 n'est pas uh, totalement nouvel, nouveau pour, pour les deux consultants, Mathias. Vous savez très bien que le KFIT a aussi travaillé avec l'Université du Rwanda dans le développement de votre plateforme. Alors, vous pouvez les approcher, vous pouvez avoir une idée plus élaborée et de ce que vous pouvez vous attendre et des initiatives qui sont euh, en train de se réaliser dans le contexte de ce projet-là. Euh, so je vous recommande vraiment de, de les approcher. Et de, 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 d'apprendre de quelle plateforme ils sont, ils sont en train de développer, vous pouvez trouver les données très intéressantes. Est-ce que vous m'entendez, Mathias? Oui, oui, c'est oui, bien. Oui, je vous entends très bien. Ah, oui. Je pense aussi que c'est dans le même... Et même, même Christine, dans la, la, dans la plateforme de REB, le projet KFIT a aussi contribué. Je ne suis pas sûr, mais vous pouvez vraiment voir comment les approcher parce qu'ils peuvent vous donner beaucoup d'informations et, et beaucoup de données qui sont très pertinentes. Oui, en tout cas, c'est très intéressant. On va les contacter. Merci. So, any other comments or any other question? I can hear someone trying to speak. Matthias, is it you? Matthias? Oui. Uh, is, did you try to Je say something? C'est moi qui ai un problème de... Yeah, J'allais dire quelque chose, mais... Je m'excuse, je ne sais pas si c'est le problème de connexion que j'ai. Oh, ah, je, je vous attends très bien maintenant. Vous pouvez, ok, vous pouvez... merci. 
Donc, euh, je voulais euh, réagir sur la, euh, la contribution de Téné euh, de la Côte d'Ivoire. Euh, vous avez dit que, oui, nous connaissons le, le projet qui est Faïti, Korea Funding Trust. C'est un projet qui a travaillé avec le Rwanda, le Zimbabwe, le Mozambique pendant la première phase. Et je sais aussi que maintenant, c'est la seconde phase euh, qui, euh, qui est en train de se réaliser dans les pays de l'Afrique de l'Ouest. Euh, alors, c'est bon, euh, comme, si, euh, comme ils sont en train de travailler sur les projets de, de systèmes de gestion et, et, et d'enseignement, d'apprentissage, pardon, euh, ce qui est nécessaire ou important pour nous, c'est d'avoir leur contact. Et d'ailleurs, c'est le cas général pour même les autres pays. Si les représentants de l'UNESCO qui se trouvent dans ces pays, euh, comme vous l'avez dit, s'ils si peuvent nous donner euh, immédiatement ou rapidement la, les contacts des personnes euh, à envoyer des questionnaires ou à interviewer, je pense que euh, ça va nous faciliter la tâche. Sinon, euh, ok, comme Téné le disait, j'ai vu la, les différentes lettres que l'UNESCO avait envoyées au ministère de l'Éducation, dans, dans certaines institutions euh, qui dépendent du ministère de l'Éducation. Euh, mais connaître le nom de, du directeur général ou du directeur de cabinet, en tout cas pour nous, c'est difficile. Il faut qu'on nous trouve des gens qui sont dans ces institutions, donc des gens qui travaillent directement avec la, ces systèmes eh, qui nous concernent pour le moment, pour que nous puissions y aller aussi directement et trouver l'information eh, adéquate. Sinon, ça, ça peut nous, nous retarder dans eh, le rapport final. Merci. Mm, so maybe what I can say, Mathias, on that one is that those letters, it's an initial phase they are doing informing those senior officials in the ministries of education to make sure they are aware of that, that the, the study is being conducted. But uh, after that also, uh, I think you have their contacts as well. So whenever you want to collect some data in the country, you can, you can write to the NPOs, those national program officers, asking them if there's any institution they may know may have learning management system so that you go to those institutions. So. I think they can provide that support as well. And we have been writing to them. And they, I'm quite sure they will be, when you approach them with a request for, of that kind of support, uh, they will provide it as well. So is it clear? Oui, merci. Mm -hmm. J'ai compris. All right, okay. So maybe uh, we are moving towards the end of this, uh, this feedback session. Maybe uh, what I can say to wrap up quickly is that I'm going to send all the comments uh, my colleagues have made. And uh, we will really expect you to uh, edit the reports uh, in the light of the feedback. And please do remember to make it easier, it's always good to produce an editing report showing how different comments made and different suggested editing uh, have been uh, kind of addressed. Uh, so that makes it easy for anyone who is looking for uh, checking uh, if those issues have been addressed uh, to not quickly if they have been addressed. So if you are planning an online survey, please make sure after you put your questions online, they are checked or you pilot it to some people. So you can share the link, then we some people can go through it or even you can find some people, for example, uh, you can see those who are managing some learning and management systems in some institutions, and I, I'm quite sure you know many, to go through those questions and they give you uh, their experience in feeding the questions. And um, um, so uh, we will work together on that uh, final report. Maybe uh, let me ask colleagues so what, uh, before we go to concluding remarks, what is the way forward? Maybe we can say that uh, the inception report will be approved subject to addressing the, the comments and the issues raised in the questionnaire. So is that uh, uh, correct? Can anyone raise their hand if you agree on that? Uh, 
can anyone uh, agree on that? So for this one, we say uh, the inception report would be approved subject to uh, is approved subject to uh, addressing the issues raised and the comments and the, uh, provided to consultants. Can anyone, anyone vote for that? Uh-huh, Jose, Jose voted, anyone seconding Jose? Anyone to second Jose? Um, yes, me, 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 moi aussi, Bernard. Uh -huh, je pense have. que c'est après l'intégration de, de l'ensemble des, des contributions. Mm -hmm. Je pense que c'est le plus logique qu'il faudrait, euh, voilà, mm -hmm. euh, euh, valider ce, 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 ce rapport initial. Et ce que je vais faire aussi, uh, uh, this is a note to consult us, please send the reports as soon as possible and I will have to go through it again and check it again and see if they have been addressed. All right, so Jean-Claude, so you were seconding or do you have a question, Jean-Claude? Uh, I'm 100% I'm satisfied, sir. All right, okay, all right. So now, thank you very much, everyone. So let's move to the closing remarks. Uh, Mr. Saliou, Sal, Saliou, can you hear me? Yes. So if I you can, can give... Well. How about you? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, I can hear you very well. So if you can give closing remarks for this uh, meeting and uh, thank you everyone. So uh, Salyu, the floor is yours. Yeah, thank you very much, Bernard. And thank you, dear colleagues and dear participants. I'll be delivering the closing remarks in, in English and then in French. Dear colleagues, dear participants, on behalf of the director of, U of IGBA, Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, I would like to thank you very much for your attendance to this uh, very fruitful session and the very helpful and constructive feedback you provided to technology solution maker LTD consultants who have already shared an, uh, a qualitative inception report. There is no doubt that your contribution will raise the quality of the work technology solution will deliver in the very important assignment. The study results will inform initiatives that will accelerate scalable teacher capacity development in Africa via online, blended and distance learning modalities, as well as innovation in development and delivery of courses and programs in various areas, including, but not limited to, comprehensive sexual education, psychosocial support, and so on. We hope technology solution maker LTD's consultants, as they have already promised earlier in this session, will improve the institution report in the light of the constructive feedback received and return the improved draft very soon so that the report is approved as suggested by Bernard earlier and the data collection process can start in time. Dear colleagues, we count on your support in helping technology solution maker consultants get access to appropriate experts for collecting relevant data. As this is a technical assignment, the quality of the report will depend on the quality of experts who will participate in the data collection process. Hence, we cannot emphasize enough the crucial necessity of your support in reaching out to the right experts for the relevant data collection. We also look forward to your support once the findings and recommendations report will have been submitted. We count on your invaluable support in the process of reviewing and validating the situation analysis and learning management system in the Sub-Saharan Africa reports. Again, Thank you very much for your attendance and have a very nice day. Chers collègues, chers participants, au nom de la directrice de UNESCO IGBA, Dr. Yumiko Yokozeki, je voudrais vous remercier pour votre participation à cette session fructueuse et les commentaires fort utiles et constructifs que vous avez bien voulu fournir aux consultants de Technology Solution Make LTD qui ont présenté un rapport initial qui est déjà de qualité. Je n'ai aucun doute que votre contribution aidera les consultants à améliorer la qualité de leur travail et les résultats de cette étude très importantes. Les résultats de cette étude, justement, guideront les initiatives dans la mise à l'échelle du renforcement des capacités des enseignants en Afrique en faisant recours aux modalités de formation numérique, hybride et à distance, ainsi que du développement et de la prestation des cours et programmes 
dans les domaines aussi variés que l'éducation complète à la sexualité, le soutien psychosocial, etc. J'espère que les consultants ont pris bonne note des suggestions reçues et ainsi qu'ils l'ont déjà promis au cours de cette session, ils vont utiliser ces suggestions pour améliorer le rapport dans les meilleurs délais afin que celui-ci puisse être validé, comme l'a suggéré Bernard, et le processus de collecte de données puisse être entamé à temps. Chers collègues, chers participants, nous comptons sur votre soutien pour aider les consultants à accéder aux experts appropriés pour procéder à une collecte de données pertinente. Puisqu'il s'agit d'une étude technique, la qualité du rapport des résultats dépendra de la qualité des experts qui participeront au processus de collecte de données. Par conséquent, votre soutien est crucial pour la mise en contact avec les ex ces experts-là appropriés en la matière. Nous attendons avec impatience votre soutien une fois que le rapport des résultats et recommandations aura été complété. Nous comptons également sur votre soutien inestimable dans le processus de révision et validation du rapport des résultats d'analyse des plateformes de formation numérique en Afrique subsaharienne. Encore une fois, merci beaucoup à toutes et à tous pour votre participation active et passez une très agréable journée. Merci Bernard, à vous. Thank you so much, Saliou. Thank you so much for the closing remarks. And uh, so we cannot emphasize enough, in, enough the really the need to support these consultants so that they deliver the high quality report. And uh, uh, that support has already started uh, in the reception meeting and the reception feedback meeting. And the, uh, all the, the work you are doing, contacting different Ministry of Education. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming to this session. So have a very nice uh, day, everyone. Bye-bye. Uh, merci, Bernard, pour l'excellente modération. Merci. Merci, salut. Okay. Merci, okay, bye. bye. Bonne journée. Bonne journée. Bonne journée, tout le monde. Merci okay. beaucoup. Okay. Merci. Bye. Bonne journée. Au revoir. Au revoir.